God works by his word. When we receive the word of God for what it really is, then the word of God works in us mightily. It releases its power in our lives. There is power in the word to heal, deliver, to liberate, to make whole, to prosper, to accomplish everything God is pleased in. This power is in the word. Matthew chapter 4. I'd just like us to read the uh, first four verses together. Matthew chapter 4. I will read verses 1 to 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I want to just highlight one very important thing here. We know who Jesus is. He is the eternal word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was, word was God. The word became flesh. Dwelt among us. So this is the eternal word. Who is now you know, clothed with humanity. Now he's being tempted. So the enemy is coming. You know, with his temptations. How does the eternal word respond to the temptation? This is very humbling. The eternal word speaks the written word in order to counteract temptation. The eternal word speaks the written word. And that's the way. He, so he sets us an example of how to counteract temptation, how to counteract the works of the enemy. It's by the written word. Just think about it. He didn't say, hey devil, you know who I am? <laughs> How dare you come and tempt me? <laughs> you got no business around me here? No. He spoke the written word. It is written. All three times. That was the way he responded. It is written. It is written. It is written. How much more should you and I, when we face something that comes against us, whether it's of the enemy or anything that's contrary to God's plans and purposes, our response should be, it is written. The word of God. Written word of God. The other thing I just want to highlight here is, he didn't think the word. I mean, it's good to think the word. It's very good. But he just didn't think the word. He had spoke the word. He said it is written. See, Someone say, okay, I think the word. And that's good. We need to think the word. We need to have our thought life covered by the word of God. That's important. But when you are contending against the enemy, when you are resisting something the enemy is doing, do it the way Jesus did it. He spoke. He said it is written. He spoke the word. And so it's very important for you and me to say the word, speak the word, say it is written. This is what God says concerning my situation. This is what God says concerning uh, my circumstances. Or when you face temptation. This is what God says. Say what God says. Amen. So we're going to stand up to our feet please. And we're going to make our declaration. Just say what it is written about you and me in his word. Let's lift the Bible's high. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong. We do the modified version. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive his word. I believe his word. I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am in absolute surrender. 
I advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people next to you? Shake hands. Give them a good smile. Say hello. You may be seated, please. This morning, I'd like us to revisit uh, an old subject, uh, a very simple subject, which, is bring, which brings our attention back uh, to the Word of God. Uh, it's not something new uh, that we will be uh, talking about this morning. Some of us have heard it previously, but I feel it's as especially as we begin a new year. Uh, it's important just to, you know, refocus, get our minds and attention back to some things that are basic, and yet, yes, yet they are very important for us. So I want to spend some time talking about God's word and emphasize the fact that God's word works. There are two things, there are many things that we know about the Word of God. We know that God's Word is truth. God's Word is truth. God cannot lie. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. So some things are impossible for God. One of them is He cannot lie. God cannot lie. His Word is truth. It's absolute. And you and I need to embrace God's word as truth. God's word as final authority in our lives. That this word is true. I am submitted to God and I'm submitted to his word. His word is final authority. We also know that God's word is inspired by God. It's God breathed. So these are not the words as, as Peter writes. You know, it's not the fables of some people who sat somewhere in some corner and wrote up something they conjured up some stories no he tells us as we know every prophecy of scripture is not of any private interpretation but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit so the scriptures the word of God is God breathed men ordinary men like you and I ordinary people they penned the scriptures yes but the origin was God God breathed God inspired, and that's how we have our scriptures, the Word of God. But there are two important things I want to just emphasize today, and we will build on it in the coming weeks. The first thing is this, that God works by His Word. God works by His Word. So let's say that, God works by His Word. So many times we say, God, work in my life. God, do something powerful in me. Oh, God, heal me. God, deliver me. Oh, God, intervene in my situation. God, I want you to work in me. We must understand that one of the primary ways, I'm not saying this is the only way, but one of the primary ways that God works is He works by His Word. He works by His Word. And there are so many amazing testimonies that we keep uh, receiving people come, uh, they sit here, uh, they just hear the word, and things change in their lives. Or sometimes they listen to it online. That's even fun because I'm not doing anything. You know, we just are, are releasing these things, uh, uh, making it available online. And so they listen to it online, and then the testimony comes my life was changed, I got healed, uh, something happened. You know, why? Why? Because God is working by His. What? That word, when it's received correctly, and when it's received into our lives, it actually brings the work of God into our lives. So God works by His word. The second simple truth I want to remind us of is that God's word carries God's power. So let's say together, God's word carries God's power. So we need to be convinced about these two things. 
that God works by His Word, and that God's Word is a carrier of the power of God. So many of us say, God, I want to touch me with your power. I want to encounter with the power of God. I want to experience the power of God. Well, one of the primary ways that you are going to encounter the power of God is when you interface with His Word, when you connect with His Word. Because His Word is a carrier of the power of God. Amen? So these are two simple things we just want to build on. And the scriptures, we just look at several scriptures along these lines. And many of these would be familiar to us. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. Uh, those of you who ever at least read one chapter, I'm sure you've got past these three verses. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, that is the waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And eight other times in that one chapter, that phrase is repeated, repeated, then God said, then God said, then God said, repeated, to emphasize to you and me that everything God did, he just spoke it into existence. So God is a designer, and, and, and you, you, you just, if you just study the design of anything, the, a single cell, or you study astronomy, or, or whatever, physics, or chemistry, and, and you, you look at it, you're stand amazed at, of the detail, the design, uh, the, just the greatness of it. And God had this design in him, and when he spoke, that word that he spoke carried out the design that he contained. The Bible tells us in Colossians 2 and verse 3, In Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So in Him is the design for everything. The wisdom, the knowledge of all of creation is in Him. And His words establish those very things. So think about, you know, when God made this lump of clay uh, from the earth. Now you take a lump of clay and you blow on it, what happens? <laughs> it remains a lump of clay. But God took a lump of clay and he breathed on it. And this lump of clay became an amazing, amazing human body. Amazing. And not just a body. But had a soul and a spirit. So the spirit, the eternal part of man. The spirit, soul, body came into existence. God just breathed. He just released air out of his lips. And this came into existence. So God works by his word. He just speaks it. Uh, Genesis, chap uh, sorry, Psalm chapter 33. Verses 6 and 9, it says, By the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So it's just this vast expanse of this universe. So big, so great. It says all of that came in just by the, into existence, just by the word of the Lord. He spoke, verse 9, he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Psalm 33, verse 6 and 9. He commanded and it stood fast. He spoke and it was done. And as we know it, the universe is continuously expanding. Uh, trying to tell us that those words that were spoken in time past continue to have its effects. It is growing and growing. What we must also understand is that when God wants to work in your life and mine, the lives of his people, he does the same thing. Uh, Psalm 107, verses 19, 20, talks about the people of God. They were in distress. And they cried out to God. Oh, God, send help. Oh, God, you do something. And it says in verse 20, he sent his words and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. 
So you're crying out for help. God, do something. How is God going to intervene? How is God going to work? How is God going to do something in, in our lives, in our situations? He sends his word and delivers, heals by the word of God, by his word. So God works by his word. Another familiar Old Testament passage is Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, as the rain comes down from heaven and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So it's like the rain coming down. And the impact, the effect it has on the earth. It causes it to spring up. And you know, some of you like gardening. Amy likes gardening. I just watch. <laughs> you know, those of you like gardening. You know, sometimes uh, because of the heat and whatever, the plants kind of wilt. And then you pour water. And in a few hours, or definitely by the end of the day, this wilted plant suddenly Stands up. It's like, you know, I'm just thinking about that. You know, our spirits, if our spirit, our human spirit, if we are, you know, wilted for whatever reason, you know, it's been too hot, too dry, and you're wilted, and the rain of his word comes, you're going to rise up the same way. You're going to stand up. Because as the rain comes down, so shall my word be. Goes forth out of my mouth, God says. Amen. It has an effect on us. It has an effect on everything. And God says, my word will accomplish what I please. It will prosper in the thing for which I sent. it." Now, you and I need to be absolutely convinced about that. That God's word works. God works by his word and God's word works. It will not fail. As he said, it will not return to me void. It will accomplish what I please. God's word will never fail. So, what I just want to emphasize to us this morning is that God works by his word. And that word is a carrier of both the purpose of God and the power of God. Whatever purpose God sent it for, the power of God is contained in that word for it to be fulfilled. He says it will prosper in what I please. It will prosper in what I sent it to. So every word is spoken with the purpose and there is power in that word to fulfill, to accomplish that purpose. So when God speaks a word and says things like, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in want. It was spoken for a purpose. So that you and I don't be in want. And that word not only has a purpose, it has the power in it to accomplish that purpose. To make sure that because God is your shepherd, you will not be left in want. He's going to meet your need. He's going to do that. We need to be convinced in our hearts about that. Some verses in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which were seen were not made of things which are Visible. So basically, he's telling us, we understand, we know this by faith, that the worlds, the natural, cre uh, the natural realm, the natural world was framed, it was fashioned, it was designed, it was formed, it was brought into existence by the word of God. So here's something we must understand. Everything in the natural came from this heavenly material, if you want to call it that, which is the word of God. Therefore, everything in the natural is subject to the word of God. 
your body is subject to the word of God. Your circumstances are subject to the word of God. Because everything in the natural came out of that word. Everything is subject to the word of God. You need to know that. There's one thing that dominates this natural world. I mean, it's from, based on this verse, what I'm saying. Is the word of God supersedes. The word of God is more powerful than everything in this natural realm. Which means that if you and I learn how to bring the word of God to bear on that natural realm. That we want to change. See, changed. It will change. The word of God will affect your physical body, your, your whole person. The word of God will affect circumstances, situations, your present, your future. Everything in this natural world is subject to the word of God. Amen. And that word has been given to you and me. It's given to you and me. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Talking about Jesus, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory. So Jesus is the brightness of the Father's glory. And the express image of his person. Or the exact representation of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his how does he uphold? He says he's upholding everything or he's sustaining everything. He's regulating everything in this universe. It's sustained, it's upheld, it's regulated, it's kept in place, kept in order by the power of his word. By the power of his word. So here's the thing. If his word can uphold and sustain and regulate this entire universe, can his word uphold, sustain and regulate your world and my world as small as it is compared to the entire universe? Definitely. His word can sustain, can regulate, can uphold your world. So, there should be ne never a time that you and I think, oh, my world's falling apart. No, it's not falling apart. If you've got the word of God in you, you're not going to fall apart. The word of God will uphold you, sustain you, regulate your life, keep you up. Amen? So, that word is so powerful. That th unexpected things may happen. You know, companies do layoffs, uh, reorganization, and, or businesses may go through ups and downs. Or, you know, uh, all these things. There are challenges in life. But not one moment should you think, oh, my life is going down. It's not going down. The word of God is upholding you. Amen. He upholds all things by the power of of his words. He's upholding your life. By the power of his words. You're not going down. But. It is important for us. To know. That God works by his word. And that his word. Is a carrier. Of his power. Just two more scriptures and we close. Hebrews 4.12. And all these are familiar verses. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is alive or living and powerful. And the rest of the verses. Also there we just focus on the first part. The word of God is alive and powerful. Full of power. So you see the text of scripture is quite different from the text you read on the newspaper. They are all both same text. But it's not the same thing. I wish we had as much interest and excitement in the word of God as the sports page. 
<laughs> now we met her. Oh, we're excited. You know what? So what was the latest update? Well, if we have that same excitement of the word of God, things will be very different in our lives. They're both same, they're both text. But this text is alive and full of power. The word of God is alive. Meaning it's, it's doing something, living things. As something is happening with that. It's not just letters. It's full of power. It's a carrier of the power of God. So when you and I say, God, I want your healing power. We must understand. God's healing power is in his word. You say, God, I, I want you delivering power. I want your word to set me free. God, can you send your power and set me free? Yes, there is power. That power to set you free is in the word. God, I want your power to bless me. I want your power to prosper me. God, I want your power. Uh, just give me wisdom. Whatever. That is in the word. And that word brings it to you. Amen. The word of God is alive and full of power. It's a carrier of God's power. So I close with this verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. The Apostle Paul is writing to the believers at Thessalonica. And he says this to them, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. See, two things. How you receive the word will determine whether it works in you or not. How you receive the word. Like if you, you know, if you receive the word like, oh, or if you deal or relate to the word as a ritual, a routine. Oh no, this morning I had to do my devotion. So you open your Bible and you read something. Oh, he begat, so begat, so begat. <laughs> God, I didn't understand anything. But I did my devotion. Conscience is clear. <laughs> At least a pastor asks me, I can tell him, yes, I read my Bible this week. <laughs> Look, if, if that's how you deal with the word of God, it's not going to have much effect. Because that's a ritual. It's a routine thing. You know, you don't, you know, you're not seeing it as it is. This is the word of God. And God works through this. It's a carrier of God's power into my life. Or if you, you know, you listen, come to church on Sunday. It's like listening to the news. <laughs> At the end of the service, say, what did you learn today? So, oh, so you remember the stories. And in my messages, there are hardly any stories. <laughs> so he said, I don't know. I don't know what he said. <laughs> no stories, remember. <laughs> so, but you've got to go past the stories to see what is the truth? What is the truth that is being presented? What is the word of God that is being given? Stories are good. They help illustrate things. But you've got to go past the news. So Paul is commending these believers. He's saying, you know, when we came and we brought the message, you received it not as the word of men. You didn't, well, these people have got, got some nice philosophies, some nice stories to tell us, uh, some nice news. No, no, no. You didn't receive it as the word of men, but you received it as the word of God. That's how you received it. So then what happened? Which effectively works. Now it's working. It's doing something. It's, it's causing something to happen inside you. Because how you received it will determine whether it works in you or not. You received it as it is in truth the word of God. 
which effectively works in you who believe. So that's the other part. God, believe that word. Believe that word. So when you spend time with the word of God, you know, whether you read it, hear it, however, there's got to be this holy reverence. God, this is your word. And I know you work through your words. And I know your word is a carrier of your power. And as I hear the word or as I read the word, I'm expecting you to do something. I am opening my life to the power of God. I welcome it. I want to see change. I want to see healing or whatever it is. God, I want to see. I welcome it. I receive it. You know, in physics, we, we used to, well, you, physics, a long time ago, <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we learned about photons, which are uh, energy packets, right? And when they impinge somewhere, part of that energy is transmitted. So you can imagine God's word to be like photons, a carrier of God's energy. Energy. Don't misunderstand that word energy. Carrier of God's power. And when you allow it to impinge inside you, welcome it, receive it, there's going to be a transmittal of the power of God into your life. Something will happen. Because God works by his word and his word is a carrier of his power. But it depends on how you receive. How you receive. It's important. And believe it. So, in the coming weeks, we're going to focus on that. How should I receive the word? So that it actually produces in my life. It's not just some things that I hear as the word of men. But when I, how do I receive it as it is in truth, the word of God? How can that word produce in my life? We're going to focus on that. We'll talk a little bit about meditation and God's word. Because that's something important. A in the Bible, you see, God tells us to meditate in my words. Not sleep through my words. <laughs> That's not meditate. Meditation is something different. But it's very important. Because meditation is part of the process of letting that word assimilate. Or assimilate that word. Be implanted in you. Become a part of you. So that that word can effectively work in you and let God bring about whatever he wants. Amen? But this morning, just two simple things. I call our worship team up, please. Just two simple things. God works by his word. This word is God waiting to work in you, in your circumstance, in your life situation, in you, spirit, soul, body. This word is waiting to work. And this word is a carrier of the very power of God. The very power that can heal, that can deliver, can just bring everything God wants to impart to you and me. He's transmitting it to us through his word. So with, we have to handle his word with that kind of reverence, with that kind of expectation Saying, God, when I read your word or when I hear your word, I receive it. Not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. We'll spend some time just <clears throat> worship God. And I know different ones of us uh, go through different times and seasons in life. And this morning, if you are in a difficult situation, I want to encourage you. God is waiting. God is ready to work in your life. Whether you're battling some sickness or disease, you're going through some adverse situations, God is ready. And as we sing this song, I want you to say, God, I receive your word. And, and think about a verse. A promise relating to that situation. And then speak that word. Say, God, I believe this word. 
if it's a situation of need then a simple scripture my god shall supply all your day it's a simple word but it's god's word it has the power to cause probation to come so he said god i am in a situation of need but i am holding on to this word and i'm saying it my god will supply all my needs or it could be some other situation take one promise relating to that situation in life say it to god speak it out that word is god working in your life as the power to affect that situation let's do it let's worship god if you need healing just sing this over your soul Father God, as I stand here in the name of your Son, Jesus. Father, I send your word to speak your word over the people present here and those watching us live, those who would listen to this. I declare your word over every sickness, over every disease, over every infirmity or every affliction in the body in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit I destroy these works of the devil I say devil your works are destroyed works of sicknesses and diseases and infirmities are destroyed in the name of Jesus and Father, even now, by the power of your Holy, your Holy Spirit, let it heal every person here in this place who needs healing, God. Work miracles in their bodies. Let sinuses, sinus conditions, problems with the sinuses be healed right now. Lord, let your healing power flow. And I, as you're standing here, as you need healing in your body just say God I receive your touch I receive your touch father by the stripes of Jesus my body is healed just speak that over your body 
by the stripes of Jesus, my body is healed. God, I receive your healing power. I receive your healing power. And I break off in Jesus and every yoke of affliction off of your body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of affliction, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your healing. And God, I speak provision over your people. Your word says that God makes all grace abound towards us. So God, release your provision over your people. I speak you peace into our circumstances, into our situations. Where there is confusion, let the peace of God prevail now in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God prevail. Your word says you will keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds on you. I speak peace into circumstances and situations where there is conflict, let there be peace in the name of Jesus. Let there be divine favor in the name of Jesus. And Father, let doors open now for those who are waiting for progress, for advancement. Let doors swing open. Open up the doors. Open up opportunities for people who are waiting to see progress, waiting to see advancement their lives. Let doors open up in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Thank you. We bless your name. Bless your name. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.